I'm now 50 hours into Hogwarts Legacy and still finding new things that I wish I knew sooner as they make the game even more enjoyable or give you some nice options if you don't like a particular element. It makes the best money farm even better. There are timestamps in the video bar for each topic, although I think every single one of them will teach you something new to make Hogwarts Legacy even better. If you like the content here on the channel, then it would be amazing if you could leave a like on the video. That would really help me out. Subscribe for way more spoiler-free tips and tricks like this, and let's go. We, of course, all like to use Levioso during combat, but I never thought about using Wingardium Leviosa during a fight, and, well, it's surprisingly fun. So we can, of course, not cast it on an enemy, but we can aim and use it to lift up objects in the environment, which we can then use against enemies. It's pretty good, dealing decent damage, breaking enemy shield, so you don't have to worry about those, or we can place a barrel close to an enemy, then blow it up in their face. The spell does not have a cooldown, so you can just keep trying, although you are an easy target, so you have to dodge away often. If there's only one enemy left, you can just lift them up, though, with Levioso, and then grab an object with Leviosa to finish them off. Or my favorite, the nice against ranged enemies that don't move, lift up an object high in the air and then drop it on them for an insta kill, which is awesome. Shout out to Boomstick Gaming for sharing this tactic in his videos. I will leave a link to his channel in the video description. And now moving on to a post from Monkey Mystic. They talked about a camera setting in Hogwarts Legacy that I wish I knew earlier. Because maybe like me, you also had to get used to the fact that it's all very sensitive and that just one one small push of the right analog stick would move the camera all over the place. Well, thanks to Monkey Mystic, we know that you can actually change this. So normally when turning the camera around, it moves like this, so pretty fast. But if we then go to the gameplay options and then to camera acceleration, turn that down to zero, you actually feel some resistance when moving the camera and it goes way slower when turning it around completely. I like this way more. And well, if we then go back to the settings and to camera sensitivity and change that to 2, you suddenly have a camera that is way closer to other third-person games, which I totally prefer. It can, by the way, change similar things for the aim feature that is also very sensitive. I only turn it down to 0 to make it easier to move the crosshair around, so I did not touch the sensitivity, but I think this is worth checking as well if you want it to change. Now, another interesting setting before I touch on some crazy things regarding the difficulties in this game, and that has to do with the camera relative targeting that is on by default so you always target the enemy that your character is facing but when you move the camera around with the right stick for example your combat target will change but if you turn off the camera relative targeting in the gameplay options menu this does not happen anymore meaning that you can just move the camera around freely without changing the combat target so now you can look around on the battlefield, see what the other enemies are doing while still attacking the target your character is facing. I really dig this, like I don't always want to play with the lock-on function, so this is a nice in-between. Another thing you can of course change in the settings anytime is the difficulty, even during combat. And they will notice some interesting things, like here on the normal difficulty my basic shot hits 81. But if I then, in the middle of the fight, switch to the hard difficulty, these hits suddenly do 40 damage, so that's a decrease of 50%. Which which is quite significant. And also when doing the window on this dog bug on the normal versus hard difficulty, you see that the damage is decreased by half, but what is interesting is that it seems to depend on the enemy. So the basic hit is always decreased, but the window on this troll, for example, on the normal and hard difficulty deals the exact same. Juggling this enemy with Levioso and then following up with the basic shot also deals the same damage on both normal and hard. So they balance things depending on the situation or something is not working properly. Now while hard overall does decrease the damage versus normal, it does seem that the easy and story difficulty do not buff damage versus normal, so are basically the same. But what you will notice on easy and the story difficulty is this huge button prompt when enemies are doing special attacks. So you can easily dodge away or way more easily parry it. Like I'm not a big fan of how big it is and it really slows down the gameplay. But I'm sure it helps people who are having a hard time with the combat. And if you by the way want a more in-depth like analysis of the differences in the difficulty. Let me know in the comments down below. I might do that. But the really big thing is that the story difficulty actually has different features that I 
wish I knew sooner because it would have saved me some time as I don't really like the lockpick mini game. It feels like it's always the same and more just something to keep you busy. And well, that's why it's nice that you can completely skip it. Only on the story difficulty, you find this auto solve option during the mini game which will just immediately finish the puzzle and open the door for you. Now you still need to upgrade Alohomora for higher rank locks, but the ones that you can open can be instantly solved. So if you're just focused on finding the demi-guy statues to of course upgrade your lock picking skill, but don't like the mini game, then just play on the story difficulty for the time being. And you can of course easily see which village in the open world still has a hidden demi-guy statue by looking at their map icon. I talked about this and way more tips and tricks in my previous so don't make the same mistakes video i will leave a link to it in the video description totally check it out if you haven't already now the story difficulty is also great when focusing on capturing bees the like normally you of course have to press a button a few times before you can rescue them especially larger creatures are a bit trickier as they can just fly away and then you cannot capture them anymore i always used levioso but we actually got louise claire in the comments noting that using glacius or arresto momentum is actually smarter to give you way more time which is totally only the case but maybe you're already guessing it but putting the game on the story difficulty completely eliminates this mini game like just pulling out your knapsack is enough and it will instantly capture the creature for you including all the large ones which is kind of crazy now sure this feels more like cheating compared to just skipping that lockpick mini game but hey if you're doing that money tactic where you are capturing creatures to sell them for 120 gold each then this actually way faster i now use this route in the north fort bog region as you can see there are many dens close to each other which is really nice so i try to capture as many beasts as possible then fly between them and then after getting all the beasts I just travel back to the starting points and do it again as most of them will have respawns. If your inventory is full then just go back to Hawksmeat and to this shop of course where you can sell your beast and I now got a ton of money thanks to this tactic. But of course, if you got a better route, then I'm all ear. So let me know in the comments down below. Still, this tactic is of course more for later on in the game after you got beast class. Because if you then return to the room of requirements, you can start capturing these beasts. That's why I also made the early money tactic video on how to get rich after just a few hours of playtime. That will be in the video description. As you might know, in that video I showed you 20 locations for the special eye chest also in Hogwarts. And well, something crazy happened. I was namely collecting demiguy statues in Hogsmeade and walk past one of these chests that I already opened and I could loot it again. Like the prompt was there and I got the 500 gold notification. Then this happened again at another chest close by also in Hogsmeade. Like it's clearly open already. Also when I checked another chest that I did not open yet on this save you of course do see the animations which were completely gone for the other two chests that I looted before. So maybe it's a bug because other eye chest I checked that I already opened could not be reopened. So it's kind of weird. Your theories are more than welcome. Of course, if you found this as well, then I'm really curious. Maybe we can find a way to reopen these chests. That would, of course, be huge. And speaking of chests, just a warning. I wish I knew earlier regarding the legendary chest that, of course, look like this. You will find them everywhere in the game. And they seem to be the only chest that you can't open again if you got a full inventory the first time around. Like here I got the your gear slots are full notification. So then I destroy an item but I could not open the chest again, which of course really sucks. Now luckily, there's a high chance that the game made an autosave, so if you just reload that and then make room in your inventory and then open the chest, you will be able to get the legendary item. So good to keep that in mind. Don't totally subscribe for way more spoiler-free tips and tricks like this. If you haven't already, I'm always curious to hear what you found, so drop it down below. A like on the video would really help me out. And click on the screen for an awesome video about items that nobody is using, but that are really, really powerful. Check it out if you haven't watched it yet. For now, I'll speak to you soon. Goodbye.